Sorry, um, quick time crashed on me so that it ended a little bit early. Let me show you though uh, one other thing. Okay, so we're using Mendeley. We're going to want to use this in Mendeley, right? So let's see how well Mendeley works. I have a Mendeley plugin for Chrome. There's also one for Safari. I'm going to hit this. Hopefully I'm logged into Mendeley. If not, I'm going to have to log in otherwise. Oh, okay, already logged in. Now you see I have somewhere down here, sample paper, right? So it's going to go there. So I got all this. I'm going to hit save. We're going to see how good Mendeley is with it. So it's saving. Okay. Open a Mendeley. Let's see if there's any problems. I'm going to have to hit sync. It's already syncing right now. It's retrieving documents. Where are we? Sample paper. Uh, and there it is. So we see that we have a problem here. Author, the author's not there. Neither's publication date. So let's go back over here. And this is our author. I, it's being annoying. There we go. So we come over here. Authors. Biliang. We have a problem in that sometimes we don't know what the actual family name is. So this is assuming Ong is the family name. Okay, come back over to Mendeley and what is it? It is not just a web page. I'd say it's a newspaper article. So it's going to be formatted like that. We're going to come back over. Where is it? Forbes. Um, actually, you know, we can just stick with a website for Mendeley. Because that really is what it is. Web page. Publication Forbes. Okay, year, what year was that? This is why I always work with two screens. Um, I'd also notice if, if you don't have dual monitors like I do, um, I think it's air, no, air display. Let me show you this real quick. Yeah, this, this one by Aviton Software. Uh, this is a cool little trick that you download this for your Mac or your Windows, and you can use your iPad as a dual screen. I don't know if something like that exists for Android tablets, but I used to use this before. Now I actually just have a different monitor. Okay, it's so coming back to this. It was 2015. Okay, year 2015. Don't worry about the pages. That's not that important, right? Um, and that's enough, right? So now we have it in there. It's saved as that. Okay. Um, so I might just end that here. Oh, let's, let's maybe go back in here. So we have, we have the beginnings of an outline. It's not perfect. Um, so we had this question, what government policies might create the most equitable housing situation in Hong Kong scenarios? I'd also say we have a bit of a definition. Equitable. What do we mean? Uh, do you mean cheapest? Cheapest for everyone? We mean uh, the easiest way to make housing affordable to the poorest. Right. See, I mean, there's a lot of issues to think about here. Okay, like I, I'm not poor. I'm very much middle class, but I find this unaffordable. So when we're talking about housing equity. We have to think about who are we talking about, right? Um, I'm, I'm not going to answer that in this section. I'm going to think about it for a little bit and come back to this. But we're going to have to come up with a definition of, of equity. What kind of equity are we looking for? Are we trying to crash the entire real estate market? Are we trying to find loopholes? Are we trying to find what? Who, who's our target audience? Which specific kind of houses? So I'm going to stop right there and we'll come back. I don't know how to stop this.